Thank, thank you very much indeed, and, and I can tell you it's been a fantastically successful day. It's a real pleasure to be here today to talk to you about some of the um, experimental treatments that I've been involved with um, in the last uh, few years. Um, I work at both Moorfields and at University College London to try to develop new treatments for people with blinding retinal diseases, including diabetes and, and other conditions like macular degeneration and inherited retinal degenerations. Um, now, what, what I would like to do just in the next 10-15 minutes is just to, to summarise um, some of those novel approaches, some of those new approaches that um, include things like gene therapy, um, stem cell therapy, and also I'm going to touch on um, the electronic prosthesis, like the um, bionic eye, if you like, just because these areas tend to, uh, tend to attract quite a lot of attention in the media, um, and I think it's important to have some understanding about exactly what stage they're at in terms of their development um, and how long it's going to take before they might be of benefit to people with different sorts of retinal diseases. Now, in terms of diabetes, I think it's very important to be clear that the, the ultimate, uh, the best approach is to, is to prevent the complications of diabetes, to present, prevent retinopathy, retinal disease. And there are ways that we can minimise um, ret retinal disease in diabetes, we can protect against it, and we've heard about that already in terms of um, managing the diabetes as well as possible, managing blood sugar, managing blood um, pressure, and, and these are really the key things um, to be aware of. And clearly it's also important to be um, very careful about detecting diabetes early because we know that um, from Tunde early detection can lead to um, very good responses to standard treatments like laser therapy. Um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, treatments that are potentially applicable to people who despite all these interventions develop significant loss of sight and these, and these things may offer some benefit to those people. So, but before I, just talk, before I talk about them in detail, I think it's just important to um, describe briefly, and I've got no slides, I'm going to do this um, just by verbally, just describe a little bit about the basic anatomy of the retina and, and its structure. And I think many of you will know that the retina is essentially a, a multi-layered sheet of nerves that lines the back of the eye. Um, and those nerve cells are of different sorts. There are nerves that are actually responsible for sensing the light, and, they're also, and those are called photoreceptors. And there are also nerves that are responsible for um, sending that electrical signal down towards the, the brain. The nerves need a lot of energy, and so they depend on a very rich blood supply. And that blood supply is retinal circulation. Now, the building blocks of both nerves and of blood vessels are cells. Cells are very tiny little units of, of tissue. And each cell has its own little manual of instructions, and that's its DNA, its, its genes. And so the building block is the cell, and each cell has DNA. Now, in diabetes, as you've heard earlier on, um, the main problem appears to be a problem with the circulation in the retina. So because of that, the, the blood doesn't reach the retina as well as it should do, so the areas are starved of oxygen and, and glucose. And, and in addition to that, air, the, the blood vessels leak, the circulation leaks, giving rise to this swelling in the retina. You've heard a lot today about accumulation of fluid, fluid in the retina and under the retina. And these things interfere with the nerves. They interfere with the function of the nerves and they interfere with the survival of the nerves. So this is the, 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 the basic process through which diabetes causes loss of sight. By causing problems with circulation, the nerves are starved of oxygen and nutrients and they don't work properly and they die. So by simple measures to control diabetes we can hope to protect our sight against these problems. But we can take in turn the, the, um, the impact on circulation and on nerves as, as ways to consider how we might intervene um, with new treatments. So we've heard about laser treatment and, and injections to try and control um, the circulation, try and prevent it from leaking and prevent it um, and hopefully prevent it from um, closing up altogether and causing areas that are starved of blood. Um, injections of, of anti-VEGF agents are, are really exciting and I think it, it's going to be a, a fantastic advance that we can hopefully have access to those more routinely 
um, to help people. But there are some limitations of, of that approach. They're not, they're not completely effective, and as you know, they are dependent on repeated injections, um, which may have to be repeated um, on a monthly basis and so several times over the course of a number of years. And that is very um, inconvenient, it's very expensive, and it's potentially uh, dangerous in the long term because of side effects. So I think we're going to see more and more um, possibility of alternative ways of delivering them so that they last longer. So different strategies, they last longer in the eye, which will mean that, that injections are not required so frequently. Now, one way of delivering something in the eye in, in the long term is to use gene therapy. And the way that that works is to provide each cell in the eye with a copy of the instruction to make that therapeutic molecule, that drug. So if we can deliver that gene into the cell of the eye, then the cell in the eye acts a bit like a little factory of its own, a little drug factory. And it can generate lots of this um, new agent and it can produce it over a period of time. And because the cell um, is surviving in the, in the long term, it, we can anticipate that the new drug will be produced in the eye in the long term. So that's one way that gene therapy can potentially be appropriate for people with diabetes. Now, um, we've been involved in this area for some time and we've looked um, at this technology in the laboratory and also in clinical trials. And we've recently shown in people, not with diabetes, but with a rare form of inherited disease, that gene therapy using modified viruses to deliver a gene into the cells of the eye can be of benefit. It appears to be relatively safe in the short term and can actually improve aspects of sight in people for whom we would not normally expect sight. So we're already using this kind of technology in the clinic, um, but it has to be said it's in a very carefully selected situation um, to test the technology. And it's going to be a long time before we can expect to have this in the clinic for, for example, in other conditions like macular degeneration and like diabetes. Um, so Gene therapy might be useful for controlling um, both the circulation in the eye and might also be useful for delivering drugs that perhaps <coughs> protect the nerves in the eye against problems of the circulation. So there are a number of ways that it could be used in diabetes. Now, as we know, diabetes causes um, damage to the cells in the eye, and if the cells themselves are, are severely damaged or if they're already dead, then it's not going to be sufficient to target them with gene therapy because there's no cell to target. An alternative there would be to actually try to replace those cells, so to replace them with new cells which might be transplanted from another part of the eye, another part of the body, or potentially from another individual altogether. And this is where we've heard a lot about this, um, stem cell therapy. And just to uh, just explain very briefly, stem cells are cells which are very special because they are um, a, cell, a cell that can potentially be um, persuaded to form any number or a large number of different sorts of specialised cells. So, so a stem cell can potentially be persuaded and, and um, differentiated in the laboratory to um, form a, a vascular cell, a blood vessel cell, or perhaps a, a nerve cell. So there's a lot of excitement that this kind of technology might be useful for generating a source of cells that could be transplanted into the retina for people with all sorts of retinal diseases, including diabetes. Um, and there's a lot of good evidence in the laboratory that this might ultimately be possible. Um, I think it's important again to be clear that in, di in diabetes there's a whole range of different cell types that can be affected and it would be very challenging to try and replace each and every one of those cell types. And it's certainly not possible to transplant a whole retina at this stage. But nonetheless the, the, the um, advances in the laboratory are very exciting and we've seen that it's possible to develop both nerve cells and also vascular cells in the laboratory. And there are experiments going on to show how those might be of use in, in models of the condition. Um, the source of stem cells is, is an important um, consideration. It may be possible to find um, sources of stem cells from within the other, other organ systems or other parts of the, of the body of people themselves. And if, that's, if they can be identified and, and persuaded to um, <coughs> produce nerve cells or, or blood vessel cells, then that would be very exciting, in particular because they would not require immunosuppression and they're less likely to be rejected 
um, by the body. Um, but it's also possible that we can use transplants from other, other parts of the, sorry, transplants from other individuals. And in particular, there's a lot of excitement about stem cells which are uh, derived from embryos. So human embryos have, a, um, have cells which are obviously going to develop into all sorts of different tissues. And it's possible to take a cell from a human embryo, and now it's possible to do that without damaging the viability of the human embryo, and to develop those into a number of different cell types. And in fact, at Moorfields, we are doing a, a trial using such cells um, in people, again, with a rare form of inherited disease, <coughs> to find out if cells from human embryos can be persuaded to form functional cells in the retina, whether they do harm, and whether they can actually improve the outcome in the long term in terms of vision. So again, we're at the point in stem cell therapy where we're beginning to um, involve people at an early stage in clinical trials. Again, it's going to be a long time before we can expect to uh, transplant cells for the benefit, benefit of people with diabetes because so many different sorts of cells in diabetes are affected. But at least we're, we're, we've started, we're on the way. In situations where large numbers of cells have been destroyed or, or not functioning properly, it may be possible to replace the retina, and this is where electronic prosthesis comes in. Um, this, these are artificial uh, light-sensitive arrays, so essentially electronic chips that can be placed in the eye. And this is not work that I'm personally involved in, but there is work of this sort going on at Morfields. Um, and these chips can be placed either in front of the retina or behind the retina and can stimulate the retina artificially. So rather than having the light-sensitive photoreceptor cells stimulating the cells that, that, that form the cable, that's the optic nerve, it may be possible to do this artificially. Um, the stimulus for this can be either sensors within the um, eye itself or po possibly a camera which is mounted on a spectacle frame um, that then it gets plugged into the eye. And again, this is all very exciting and, and um, the early trials of people who have been involved in these are very encouraging and they demonstrate very strikingly actually that it's possible for people who can previously see nothing at all, possibly light or dark, um, are actually able to perform quite, quite impressive um, tricks. They can, they can see um, patterns on a chart, they can see letters and they can actually to some extent read. So to be able to enable people who have really little vision to read is a, is a major, major achievement, I think. Um, however, it's important to um, be clear that although these tricks can be performed in, in carefully controlled scientific environments in the laboratory, it's um, not yet at the stage where these, these uh, visual uh, stimuli, these visual experiences, are of significant value to people in terms of making improvement to their, their daily lives. So again, it's hugely exciting and we're just at the outset um, of this sort of technology, um, but we hope that ultimately it will provide something that will be of real use to people. So I've summarised the, the potential for gene therapy, for, for stem cells, and also for electronic prostheses. Um, and just to reiterate, it's, we're very excited about the potential for this, and you may hear about this kind of work in the laboratory. Um, hopefully it will be um, of use to people with diabetes, um, but it's going to be some time before we can expect that to be the case. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to take questions. Hi, Professor Benjamin. Uh, I just wanted to um, ask whether you are working with any other uh, trusts, for example, uh, to also uh, get gene therapy, uh, i.e. stem cells, and whatever they are, with regards to the pancreas itself. Is there any work? Mm. So, the research that I, the, the question was whether um, we're involved at Moorfields in uh, collaborations with other sites who are developing uh, stem cell therapy for treatment of diabetes itself, not just its complications. Uh, and the answer is that um, we are communicating with uh, these these sites, but we're not actually collaborating actively because it's a it's a very different um, organ organ system, 
um, and we meet we meet people at meetings um, and we do, we're able to discuss and, and discuss our different approaches and exchange ideas um, but because our own area of expertise is in the eye itself we're concentrating very much on on the eye